Next we're going to put on the uh, crimp on coax connector on uh, a piece of coax for you. And the crimp on, as the name implies, require a tool to actually crimp uh, or attach the connector to the, the uh, wire itself. And uh, so that's the tool we're going to use here. Now the crimp on, when you look at it, it has a little barrel back here. And there are actually three little rings on the side of this barrel that help us align the connector in the tool when we go to crimp it. Because the tool has kind of a hex shape to it or the die does, I should say, and that will turn the uh, connector into kind of a hex shape as well, again, attaching it to the wire. Now, these little rings help us center because if you look real closely at the connector, there's a nut that spins in the front, and right behind the nut is kind of a fatter ring here. Now, when we load the connector in the tool, if I get any of that fatter ring inside this die, you're going to have a very hard time crimping this, so we want to make sure we uh, avoid that when we go to uh, load the connector into the tool itself. Now you're going to do your normal two strip strip like you always do on coax fittings. And we're going to fold the braid back just like we normally would. And of course we can push the connector on by hand. I want to make sure that again that white dielectric here is even or flush with that opening down inside the fitting. Okay? So again we can simply do that by hand. Uh, we do actually make these little F connector tools and these allow us to, this end of the tool allows us to get on the back of a fitting and tighten it down on the back of a you know, TV or a set top box or loosen it up. Uh, the other end of these tools allow us to take a connector and just thread the connector on the end of the tool like that. And then I'm going to use this to help me ensure that I can push this on. Now this is kind of sometimes what I think for the sissies out there that can't push their connectors on by hand. But uh, there you go. Now when I remove the tool, I want to make sure that again the white part is even or flush that little opening inside of here. And you can see it's not. So I'm going to push this on until it is even or flush with that little opening. There we go. And again, as you can see, the white dielectric is even now with that little hole down inside there, and we're ready to crimp it. Now, when we go to crimp it, we're going to use the middle hole of this particular tool, this die here. And this tool is what the, we, we call a ratcheting type. It, oh, you have to squeeze the tool all the way down before the tool releases, okay? And if it's uh, squeezed part way down, it won't release until it is squeezed all the way down. Now, if you ever uh, start crimping something down and then you realize you've got it in the wrong spot and you need to release the tool, the tools do have a little lever right here you can push forward and it will open the tool back up. So if you ever do have to release it, that's how you do it. Okay. Now, as we said, we're going to crimp it down. We're going to use the middle hole here. And when I load the connector in the tool, I want to make sure that when I look at, load that in there, I've got the connector even or flush with this side of the tool. And that will make sure that this little ring I mentioned earlier, none of it is inside the die. And we simply then just simply grip it down and release the tool. And there you have a properly terminated uh, crimp on F connector. And these have been used for many, many years in the industry. This used to be the standard connector for many, many years. And we still sell a lot of them to the DIYers and the uh, homeowners of the world. So there you go, a properly terminated crimp on.